YouTube, what is going on? I hope everyone is doing well and today I am back with yet another build guide and today we are going to be building our PC with an RTX 3090. I probably do not recommend that you go out and build a gaming PC with a 3090 but I like to do things a little different and sometimes just go a little bit crazy so Maybe you want to do that, or maybe you want to follow this build and get an RTX 3080, whatever suits your needs. So I will take you through the full build process, I will show you how to install all the wires, all the parts, all that good stuff, and then I will show you just how well this game. So with that said, let's get into this. So let's start with the case. I have opted to use the Corsair 4000X in white. And damn is this a clean case with those grey accents and it also packs a few features like the ability to mount your GPU vertical, a built in RGB hub and ample space for cable management so overall pretty solid case at an excellent price point. For the CPU we are using Intel's 10850K, not only does this save you money over the 10900K but after overclocking performance is pretty much identical so it definitely makes sense just to get the 10850K, save some money, and you are pretty much good. So the motherboard that I am pairing this with is the Asus ROG Strix Z490A Gaming. With that white and grey theme along with being packed with loads of features, it was an easy choice for this build. So keeping the CPU cool, we are using the Corsair H100i RGB Platinum SE, and it will certainly get the job done and look great doing it. For the RAM, I chose 32 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro, clocked at 3200 megahertz. As some of you guys asked that I use Vengeance instead of Dominator, so I went ahead and swapped that in. For storage, I'm using this RGB NVMe from XPG. You can get them in both one terabyte and 500 gigabyte options. And I'll pair this with my one terabyte Samsung Evo SSD. And last but not least, the GP we are using is the MSI RTX 3090 Gaming X Trio and this thing is an absolute monster and honestly I can't wait to get gaming on this. As always I will be using these braided cable extensions from Mod Tech Customs and just to clarify I do pay for these out of my own money, this is not a sponsor or anything like that but I did contact Mod Tech and they have agreed to do a little giveaway with me so if you leave a comment in the comment section I will go ahead and in two weeks time I will pick a winner and we'll go ahead and send you a set of cables so that's pretty awesome and maybe let me know down below what colour you would like. Of course you can also hop over to his Instagram and check the cables out and if you're going to pick any up use code BEGINNERSTECH to save yourself 10% on any purchase. Just as a side note I definitely recommend getting a beefy power supply for this build. I will be using the V1200 from Cooler Master but feel free to get any brand at all Maybe try and aim for around a thousand watts and you should definitely be good, especially if you're doing any upgrades in the future. Okay, so let's start building. As always, take your motherboard and set it on top of the box. We will start by installing our CPU. So just take note of the gold marking on the CPU as we need to match this up with the triangle on the CPU socket. When you're ready, open the latch up, set the CPU down, simply close the latch over and the cover should just pop off. Now go ahead and take your RAM and make note of the cutout as we match this to the notches on the dim slots. Open up the slots by pressing the latch down, then just install your RAM by applying a little force and they will click into place. The last job here is to install our M.2 drive, so grab the standoff and screw from the motherboard box. And as this NVMe features RGB, I'm going to install it in the bottom slot to allow it to be visible. So the first job we need to do is install the standoff, and this goes in the third hole along, it just screws in by hand. Then take note of the cutout on the drive, as this matches up to the notch on the socket, and when you're ready, just push it in place and secure it down with the screw. So now let's go ahead and get our case ready. Look in the back of the case and you will find your box of goodies. This contains all your screws and fixings and all that good stuff and I will also be removing this hard drive cage to get extra space but this is totally optional. You just remove the two thumb screws, take the foam padding out and simply slide it towards you if you want to go ahead and do this. So the 4000X arrives with some RGB fans pre-installed but I will be using these white QL fans for this build so if you're following along go ahead and simply remove the black fans and install your free QL fans on the front and when you are finished 
and still another for the exhaust on the rear as you can see here. Now go ahead and lay the case down and lower the motherboard in lining it up with the IO cutout at the rear and it should sit nicely in place. Then grab your motherboard screws from the box you removed from the case and secure it down. There's 9 screws and I advise you to install these in a crisscross pattern so start at one corner, move to the next and so on and so on and so on. So now that we have that installed let's go ahead and install some cables. For the fans I will be using these 1 to 3 splitters that you can easily pick up from Amazon etc. One end basically plugs into a fan header on the motherboard then you connect 3 fans to the other end like so. The RGB connectors on the fans just connect up to the included RGB hub as you can see here they just simply slide into place. Now take the USB cable from the RGB hub and connect it to a USB port located on the bottom of your motherboard. Next we will connect the front panel IO cables. If you look in the motherboard manual it will show you a nice diagram of how to install these. It's super simple and when you are finished you should have something that looks like this. Next go ahead and grab the front panel USB-C cable and connect it to the USB-C header on your motherboard right here. It just pushes in nice and easy. We can then do the same for our other USB cable, just make sure that you take note of the notch and then connect it to the USB header on the motherboard located here. Now grab your audio cable and this attaches to the header on the bottom left of the motherboard. Again, this only goes one way and is easily pushed into place. Now it's time to install your power supply. The process is the exact same regardless of your model, just make sure the fan is facing downwards and then secure it in place with the included screws that arrived with your power supply. Now that we have that installed, let's go ahead and attach some power supply cables. So grab your cables labelled CPU and plug them into the CPU header on the motherboard located top left. Small note, you can use both headers if you plan to be a little aggressive on the overclock. Now go ahead and grab the 24 pin and plug it into your motherboard header located here. Obviously I am using my extensions but the process is the exact same if you are not. Now I suggest taking the SATA cable from the RGB hub and plugging it into the power supply as shown. From there we can go ahead and install our SSD. Just remove the bracket and attach the SSD to it using the screws that are out of the case then simply put it back in place. Then go ahead and grab a SATA cable from your motherboard box. Plug one end into the SSD and the other into a SATA port on your motherboard located here. From there, give the SSD some power by attaching a SATA cable from the power supply. So now it's time to go ahead and install our H100i. Take note it does come with pre-applied thermal paste so do not worry about that. Again, I won't be using the included fans that you can see here but if you are it's the exact same idea. Just make sure you place them in this orientation. This will make sure that the wires are facing the rear, the fans are exhausting the air out of the top of the case etc. We attach the fans to the radiator using these long screws, just be careful to make sure you're not screwing into the radiator itself. Now before going ahead and installing the radiator I advise you to take the CPU fan cable from the pump head that looks like this and attach it to the CPU header on the motherboard. We do this now as when installed there is no room to get at it. From there simply attach the radiator to the top of the case using these short screws and washers. Next up go ahead and grab the mounting bracket out of the box that looks like this and take note that you can easily adjust this and it features a sticky back for easier installation. Then simply go ahead and put it in place. From there grab the standoffs and screw them in by hand into this back plate. Now you can go ahead and place the pump head over the standoffs then secure it down using the included thumb screws. Get them hand tight first of all, then give them a little extra tighten with a screwdriver. Just make sure to use a crisscross pattern and this will make sure that it tightens evenly. Now we can go ahead and connect all the cables needed for the pump. Take the included mini USB cable and plug it into the pump head here. From there the other end of that USB cable just plugs into a USB port on the bottom of your motherboard. Then take the SATA power cable and plug it into the power supply. And for the fans we can let the H100i control its own fans by plugging them into its own connections like so. And for the RGB I suggest taking the two headers and plugging them into the RGB hub for an easier sync but feel free to use the H100i connections as well if you wish. Now all that's left to do is connect the graphics card. So remove these two brackets, open up the PCIe slot by pushing down on the lever then simply slide the card into place and you should feel it lock in. 
From there, take the two thumb screws you removed and secure the card in place. Now, go ahead and give the card some power by using the PCIe cables from your power supply. There should be three 8 pin. Then, simply put the case back together, plug in the power lead, plug in your monitor, plug in your peripherals and go ahead and switch it on and you should be greeted with a lovely RGB show and the PC will boot into the BIOS. From there, you're going to go ahead, install Windows, install the drivers, then pretty much just start gaming. I will leave a video linked down below that you can follow on how to do that. The process is super easy. So obviously, now we're going to go ahead and check out some benchmarks. Just as a side note, all these games were run at 4K on their highest settings. So let's go ahead and check these out. Okay, so as you can see, this absolutely crushed games at 4K without even a stutter. So if you're looking for one of the fastest gaming PCs around, then this is probably a good contender for it if you are crazy enough to go ahead and buy an RTX 3090. My CPU is overclocked to 5 GHz, but the GPU was left at stock, just so you guys know exactly what to expect if you go ahead and buy it straight out of the box. Obviously, give the GPU a little overclock and the performance figures will rise a little. So let me know what you think about this PC down below. Are you crazy enough to go ahead and build something like this? Or are you just going to stick with the RTX 3080 or other alternatives? So as always guys, thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any questions or need any help, just let me know down below and I will definitely get back to you. Stay safe, be kind to each other and I will catch you on the next one. Peace. Those were the kindness. Thank <laughs> you.